We turn now to the mayor of Baltimore, Brandon Scott. Mr. Mayor, thank you for spending part of Easter with us. We appreciate it. After this bridge collapse this past week in your city, what is the most urgent need right now in Baltimore? Well, the, the most urgent need, because our focus will always be on those families. Uh, I am to focused on the total impact of on humans, right? And that begins with the loss of life. That then goes to uh, uh, what's going to happen for those families and then the economic uh, realities following this. And that's where our focus is going to continue to be. Uh, we have the, the salvage under operation underway as of yesterday with one crane and one barrage working to start to uh, cut some of the bridge out. That work is happening through the unified command, but we are and always will be focused on the human impact of this tragedy. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. What more can you as a city be doing for those four families and then more broadly for the roughly 15,000 workers whose jobs are tied in one way or another to the Port of Baltimore? Well, listen, I said from day one that my office would be there to support the families in every way possible. We already set up a fund uh, that now has over $300,000 into it for those families, and we will support them throughout this. Uh, that could mean that they need ongoing trauma care. That could mean in the future they need help with different jobs and things like that. But we also have to focus on the impact to the workers and the businesses at the port. I first have to be thankful to President Biden uh, uh, for having the SBA allow us now to have these uh, businesses apply for grants through SBA to be able to keep their business open, keep those folks employed. You're talking when you say SBA about the Small Business Administration that's offering now loans of up to about yeah. $2 million to the affected companies. You know, ultimately, Congress is likely going to have to get involved in some of this to provide federal relief. What if any kind of direct outreach have you done to lawmakers in both parties to try to make the case for what Baltimore needs? Well, listen, I, I have the best congressional delegation in the United States Congress. I don't have to reach out to them because they've been there on site talking with us, talking with the impacted individuals. And we know that they are going to do everything in their power to bring back resources for this tragedy. That doesn't just impact uh, the city of Baltimore and the state of Maryland. This port is the number one port for cars and farm equipment. So this matters to folks in rural North Carolina and Kansas and Iowa. This matters to the global economy. And it does not. Uh, this should not be something that has anything or any conversation around party. Secretary Buttigieg told us that there's still no sense of how quickly this cleanup will happen or how quickly the bridge will get rebuilt. What happens to the economy of Baltimore in the meantime? Well, right now, that's the things that we're looking at, right? We're looking at how we're going to offload some of the stuff that is in the port and maybe use our partners uh, at Trade Point Atlantic to help with some of that. I'll be meeting with labor leaders and the actual workers myself uh, tomorrow to talk about what kind of other supports that they need while we all wrap our heads around and figure out how we can support them and keep as much commerce flowing as possible. This is going to be a long road. This is not going to be a sprint. This was a tragic accident, but it seems these days when something like this happens in this country, there are always conspiracy theories and a lot of misinformation thrown around. And in the case of this accident, some downright nasty things said about you online this week. I've got to ask you, one of the wilder things is some conservative critics blamed the bridge collapse on diversity, equity, and inclusion policies in Maryland. Diversity, equity, inclusion, better known as DEI to a lot of people. They called you, some critics did, the DEI mayor. What did you make of that when you heard it? Well, as I've said already this week, we know, listen, I am a young black man, a young black mayor in this country. We know that there are a lot of racists and folks who don't think I should be in this job. I know that. I've been black my whole life. I know how racist and racism goes in this country. But my focus is always going to be on those people. I didn't want to be out there that night asking, answering questions about the AI. I'm worried about the loss of life. We know how ridiculous that is. Those folks are afraid, as I said this week, to use the N-word. This should not be even in conversation. We have to remain focused on the mission at hand and continue from my vantage point to prove those people wrong about people that look like me by doing my job in the best way that I can and ignoring the noise of folks who simply want to uh, be devices and are afraid that their way of life where people that don't look like them and think like them can be in control, can be in power and actually be better at the job. Well, we thank you for spending some time on this Easter talking to us about the situation. Thank you. Happy Easter.